here it go It's all about you It's all about me It's all about what we do Making art You and me Trying to find something to believe Because I'm running wild I ain't running free Still got a lot of shit left to see Hey guys, welcome back. It's your Radiant Commentary Queen, Britannia, and we're here to talk about the regulars. So, I would have to start with saying that it's actually pretty good. And when I mean actually pretty good, like I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought this, all right, I thought this TV show was super interesting. Um, it took me a minute, maybe like in the first, um, first viewing attempt because I've been like spamming multiple hours trying to get like um, some essays done so I've been very sleep deprived so like I had to like do multiple attempts of watching this sh of just watching the show thoroughly so hopefully like I didn't miss too much or like misconstrue too many things but um, yeah when I actually had sleep and had <laughs> had a decent go at um, for the final time actually watching it all the way through and really paying attention to the show it was super interesting now um, if you guys don't know but I'm pretty sure you are if you clicked on this video the regulars is basically um, a TV show based off of a graphic no uh, graphic comic so the comic kind of piggybacks on the idea and the reputation and the lore of um, Sherlock Holmes and Watson everybody and their mama knows Sherlock Holmes if you're English if you're American if you're Canadian if you're Australian wherever else if you're Asian I think you probably know Sherlock Holmes if you're, or you have at least heard the name Sherlock Holmes and Watson there have been so many adaptions on like the 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 the, the concept of Sherlock Holmes that it's really mind-boggling that even in 2021 this like base idea is still getting some kind of adaptions although I would have to say that going into the show I didn't actually even know anything about the show, so I didn't know that there was going to be Sherlock and Watson. When I saw that that was a premise amongst the plot, I really didn't think that it was necessary at all. Um, but like recant that because once you get down to like the ending of the show and like Sherlock and Watson do become more um, implemented into the characters, um, into the plot, then you kind of see, oh, okay, well I guess it wasn't completely useless having these um, characters here. But still, I don't really know if they need to be Sherlock Holmes and Watson. Like, I think like the plot and the characters that they've set up are so good, they really did not need this, like this base premise to piggyback off. Although I do understand like when you're doing something new, especially when you're pitching at something that's like a series or a platform like Netflix, you want to try to have something to get, um, to garner some kind of attention because as we've seen, Hollywood and a lot of these streaming platforms and just production companies in general, they do not care. It, well, at least it looks like they do not care about fresh ideas. When you have a fresh idea, it's really hard to get that um, notice and get it launched off. A lot of the times, these companies really do actually want your idea, your fresh idea attached to something that's previously existed so they can check the numbers to see how these kind of things um, do well. So I think Nate, that could be one of the reasons why they attached Sherlock Holmes and Watsons to these characters in this plot when it really wasn't needed at all. Like it, it, it doesn't do much to jump off the central theme and plot much at all. It just, if anything, it's just an interesting take on Sherlock. I, I do like the idea of Sherlock Holmes being a genius that has seen some kind of like, um, the, some kind of breakdown in it. I think a lot of the times in the in the um, interpretations and just like the portrayals that we get of Sherlock Holmes and and Watson, Sherlock Holmes is always brilliant, is always a genius, and he's always aloof. And the only way that he really suffers from his genius and aloofness is because he lacks um, person personal ability. You know, he lacks um, social um, grooming. He lacks. She just lacks basic social concepts when it comes to. Act actual physical interaction however I do like this kind of feel of not him just being unsociable him being like tormented that may sound wrong but it's it's fresh because I've seen a few Sherlock stuff and I think a lot of it just kind of focuses on the oh he can do so many things which I always found just so unrealistic to show that this is how this is why he's genius because if anything it would show to me that Sherlock Holmes has a photographic memory 
and he uses that photographic memory to remember the most trivial of details to be able to conclude and deduce random things which does actually help him it seems but it's just so odd that someone would spend that, many t that much time remembering such trivial details about tea packaging, tea branding, uh, footprints, how certain um, sneakers scuff like it's just like the most trivial things and just because he knows that trivial information he can add that together and actually you know base it off of something that's real and concrete and give him some kind of um, evidence and lead toward his cases but I don't really I've never really been that into that it, it always just kind of makes me feel like that is that really genius but that's my argument. I know a lot of people love Sherlock Holmes and da da da. But like I said, the show is really good. It's really worth the watch. It's really interesting. Um, I would have to say that the acting is really good. I didn't have any issues, I think, with the acting at all. It had some slight tones of humor. One of my critiques, though, I think, I, I wish they had a bit more funny in it. Sometimes when you have a show that's really like dark and dramatic, it would really do. It would really add well to have a bit more humor than just the odd joke every what two times an episode because a lot of times like darkness and suffering does breed humor and it would just it just will help balance out the toning of just having something just be so miserable all the time you know what I mean especially when these characters aren't really even having a chance to enjoy each other because not only are they going through this this dark mystery they're battling monsters they're also impoverished and they're struggling to feed themselves and to clothe themselves and to bathe themselves so it's like you don't really give them any kind of moments of joy much at all throughout the whole uh, throughout the whole series so i wish they at least had a bit more humor in the series to kind of up, uplift the mood here and there like a consistent dark mood reminds me of twilight i'm not for it <laughs> like even when i watch horror i love horror with comedy elements in it i think it's the most brilliant thing it's just so much more exciting and interesting that way but um yeah uh, the cinematography was good I think sometimes it was a little it was a lot of dark turning for me but at least it didn't have that like twilight effect like I've said it before I hate 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 when production or directors just cast a one color set tone filter over a movie or a TV show because like the theme is edgy Please don't do that. It's so lazy. If you if you want to portray edgy toning, you can do it through, through so many things. Don't put a filter over a movie and a TV show like this is Instagram. What? You want me to look at the same colored setting for an hour or nine hours if it's a series or however long? Don't do it. I hate that. But yeah, great cinematography. Um, it's set in old London, which is kind of like meh to me because... I think there are so many shows right now set in old English, set in old London right now. It's just like, mm. so, and I think as well because I live in the UK, maybe I don't really feel like seeing the UK right now because I'm stuck in the UK. I would rather maybe see another location. Can we do Europe a bit more, people? Like, <laughs> I don't know, the streets, the streets of France, the streets of Italy, the streets of Spain, they're beautiful. Can I see that instead? Just, just putting that out there. Um, what else about the show? One other major thing about the show that I really want to address, and I'll try to do it as, as quickly as possible so we can really talk about the actual plot and dialogue and stuff like that, is the literal racism targeted towards the show because they have an Asian character and a black Watson. And I'm just like, what? Like there were literally people I, when I do these um, commentary videos, sometimes I like to look at other people's reviews um, and comments because then I can come back and be like, oh, I've heard that some people are saying this, but I think it's that instead. You know, give kind of give my feedback on how other people perceive the show and tell you whether or not I agree or disagree. And in this case, I strongly disagree because I've seen, I was, I saw so many just racist comments and I'm gonna say racist because I don't know why people are so afraid to say racist it's not just offensive it's not just not just like insensitive it is racist people saying that oh 
oh, so now we're gonna pretend like Asian people were in London at the time? Or we're gonna pretend like there were black people in London at the time? People literally said that we we're gonna pretend as if there were black people at that time. I'm pretty sure black people have been in the UK for a very long time, maybe as slaves, but they were there. So I don't even understand that comment. So I'm guessing you just don't, isn't, so what are you saying? You're saying either you don't want to see black people even though it is actually accurate or you want to see them portrayed as slaves because that's historically accurate. Like what are you saying? First of all, what about this show sent the message out to you that it is supposed to be historically accurate? And of all the historical accuracies, why are you picking on the racial inaccuracies? Because Sherlock Holmes and Watson don't exist. That's Why don't you have an issue with that historical accuracy? Why don't we just scrap them from the show because they don't exist? Why are you not um, irritated by the fact that I do their clothes, are their clothing even historically accurate? Because that was one of the things I peeped, that's like, I, I don't think so. Uh, you, you don't care that the prince character, the white prince, didn't exist? That's historically inaccurate. I don't think there was a Prince Leopold and the Queen didn't have 50 kids, did she? That's not historically accurate. But you have a problem with the Asian girl and black people being in the show. Like if you're racist, just say that. There are little people saying, oh, this is woke garbage. Oh, everything doesn't have to be woke. It has nothing to do with wokeness. People just want diversity in their shows because it's a legitimate want. It has nothing to do with people wanting to perceive that want to be perceived as woke. People just want to see themselves in shows. Also, even if you don't just want to see yourself, like I want to see black people in TV shows, but I also want to see Asian people in TV shows. I also want to see um, Latino or Hispanic people or Latino people in TV shows. I want to see people from all over the globe in TV shows that are not just white people. Even when it, even when you're talking about white people, I don't always want to see American people. I don't always want to hear an English accent. I would like to hear a Spanish accent from Spain. I, would, I wouldn't mind hearing an authentic French accent. I wouldn't mind hearing an authentic Italian accent. Like, people just are tired of the same old, same old being portrayed throughout TV. It has nothing to do with wokeness. So for you to come out and say that you don't have to do this or it's, a, it's garbage to do this, please be quiet. Go over there. Tired of you. Tired of all you people. But yeah, moving on. I just want to set that record straight, especially if you're coming here to say in my comments about how you didn't want Asian and black people in this show, because that's ridiculous historical accuracy. People will be using that argument for fiction. How? Anyway, but yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, one thing when it comes to diversity, I really felt like there was um, there was a bit of diversity there, and, and I do appreciate that the Asian character um, Be Beatrice, they didn't just place her in the show. And this is when we're talking about diversity. We want authentic, genuinely represented diversity, and we want it to be well written. Like we don't want you to throw in characters of a certain race into a certain role without any forethought in it. Like Beatrice was written well. She didn't have any stereotypes presented in her. She was a strong Asian female character. She did what she had to do. She, she was like very upfront about her feelings. Like, I really liked Beatrice. There were times when she annoyed me, uh, like I really liked her. And that's another thing, like she's a female character in a teen, in a teen or young adult TV show that isn't also just portrayed as a dickhead. Like I feel like there's been so many TV shows out now where like the young teen girl character is just absolutely horrid for what reason? For what reason? But no, like this character, she cares about her friends, she cares about people, she's trying to, she tries to do the right thing, she has emotional trauma that sometimes justifies why she acts a certain way. Like she's a well thought out character and thank you Jesus. She's also basically kind of the main lead. I know the show is a kind of like, the show is really supposed to be like a, an ensemble cast sort of thing, but Beatrice is the main character. Whenever you have like an ensemble cast and no one is exactly the main lead, you always have those like, couple of characters that you we know they're the main protagonist or at least they're favored by uh, the plot or the the story or the um, director whoever during production at least for you know most most seasons you know what I mean so she's basically the main character and one thing I have to say is I don't understand why they can just commit to having two Asian characters and make her sister Asian too like I was just 
I specifically questioned that her sister was not Asian. I just assumed, okay, like whatever. It, first of all, this nothing in this um, TV show is going to be realistically accurate. But second of all, I just assumed that they had like different fathers because they had the same mom, and that was the case. But I really felt like they could have just leaned in and made her sister Asian too. There are other white characters in the show. Um, and we even have Leo's sister who could be like, you know, our white female character who can maybe lean in in season two and give us that kind of character if, you know, if, just to have it some kind of blend. But I, I feel, I, I felt like they could have just leaned in and make her Asian too. And that's another issue I think I have sometimes with diversity is that they do it, but sometimes you know they they don't want to go, it feels like shows don't want to go too far with things. So they kind of create these kind of loopholes so that they don't, don't have to. But even with that in mind, I think the character who plays her sister, Jessie, she's pretty good. I, I really liked Jessie. Like, people were giving Jessie mad hell in the beginning of the show. And I'm just like, nah, 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 stop talking to my girl like that. Like, she's, she's a sweet, she's such a sweet character. I think the actor is so cute, she's so pretty. She plays the character, I think, very well. Everyone really plays their character pretty well. I don't have any complaints about anyone's character. I almost like, I think, all of the characters, except Sherlock and Watson. Watson, I'm kind of trying to warm up to him because it seems like he's trying to do the right thing now. But my man, you, evil. You were, you were almost, evil in the beginning, uh, the beginning of the show. I do love that they just made him love Sherlock. And I also liked how they didn't have to have a conversation about whether or not he is gay or bisexual or whatever. He just loved Sherlock. And like, it wasn't questioned or anything. He didn't have to come out or anything. And there's nothing wrong with coming out in a story or a TV show. But I feel like sometimes, you know, LGBT portrayal is always portrayed in TV, in TV shows and movies as someone having to come out and people don't always have to come out it's either someone has to come out like that's their arc or it's like portraying like gay or lesbian stereotypes that make it obvious to the audience that they are gay or lesbian or whatever else so that there doesn't need to be a coming out story and it's just like y'all getting kind of tropey and stereotypical with this but okay but yeah loved um, love Beatrix, love Jesse, Watson, he, I just felt like he was such a, a, a dickhead to those kids. For what reason? For what reason? Um, if I have to pick a favorite character, I don't know. I think Leo is so cute. But I think my kid, my, my favorite character is probably Beatrice. It's probably Beatrice. But um, Spike, um, just like a side note off. I really hope in the second season, I'm pretty sure this show will get a second season because it is pretty good. I've seen, other than the racist comments, pretty good reviews on the show. Um, I really hope that they develop Spike more because Spike didn't have any of his own, didn't have any of his own personality. At least with Watson, we have a black character who's actually has some complex, um, writing behind him, he's greatly written. Spike, he's a, a funny character, but he's like really sidelined, which is kind of terrible when all of the other characters have their own thing going on and are written to be complex and are written well and they're written to have so much depth into them. Spike is literally the only character who doesn't have his own motivations, it seems. He doesn't have his own death. He doesn't have his own personal trauma that he's talking about, even though he's also an orphan, like everything everyone else has gone through, he's almost gone through as well. So I really wish, I really hope that in the second season, they do a bit more with his character and not just have him love Jesse. Because that's what it feels like they're going the, the path down to give him death by linking him to another well-written character who is probably well liked, a character like Jesse. Nah, 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 give him his own standing. He's a funny character, he's super nice, he's a great dude, he's literally, I like how, he said how Jesse, I think, is the heart of the, of the group, but I think Spike is the heart of the group. Like, he is so well thought of when it comes to all of his friends. So, he's, he's really, um, he's really caring. So I hope that gets better for him. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen with like Leo Leo and like B when it comes to their relationship because he's supposed to get married to this other chick. 
who seems kind of interesting of a character but you know we don't know too much right now she just seems like super pro pragmatic about the whole situation she's just accepted that this is the life that we're living so what do you want me to do about it so i'm just gonna make it as best as i possibly can for me but um it's interesting to see where that will go uh, i don't know what's gonna happen with billy i hope billy gets his own love interest billy kind of rubbed me the wrong way in the beginning he has this really hard complex of trying to be strong and trying to be manly and he's really such a dickhead most of the time like it doesn't come off strong to me i think he's obviously misconstrued what it means to be um, a strong man to probably because i don't know probably because his trauma related to his father so he doesn't know what it means to be a strong man he thinks that being the strong man is just being like boorish and trying to literally just like threaten and intimidate everybody but also that comes from the complex of not being able to physically do anything for himself and his friends Beatrix and well not his crush Beatrix when they were in um, the workhouse so I can understand once we got to his kind of episode where we find out more about him why he's like that but hopefully I want to see him kind of develop himself emotionally and mature himself and for him to find his own love interest because he need to move on from B. Y'all had all that time to love each other if y'all was going to love each other. You don't, she does not love you sir, okay? I don't even think you love her, you just have this attachment to her. Um, you may even just have emotional guilt so you think you love her so if i was you sir i'd move on <laughs> she in love with the prince she you you, you can't have that you know you can do you know I, there's nothing you can do sir not a thing um, other just side comments i think i want to say about things that didn't make that much sense to me about the overall plot but most of the I would have to say I think most of the plot does make sense. It's just these kind of little things I felt like, ha, huh, really? Now to begin with, um, when Watson seeks out um, Beatrice to get, I, I assume it's to get to her sister Jess because he knows that she probably has some kind of abilities and he's noticed that the rip has opened and there are monsters coming. So he needs somebody with the abilities that her, that her mom had in order to help the situation because he can't do it on his own, especially with Sherlock being a, a addict who has not been sober in years and really isn't functioning well to be able to solve any monster mysteries. However, I just found it really difficult that even though he, he needs somebody with special abilities, I found it really difficult thinking that he would, he, he would go to Beatrice and the kids. I, I found it really difficult. Seeing as how he almost kind of had a grudge against their mother and has spent 15 years distancing himself away from them. Like he didn't try to reach out or do anything for them at all. He didn't even do something as simple as make the brother of Sherlock, um, I forgot his name, aware that these kids exist so they can have a, a life that's well. Like he, it seemed like he resented their, their presence. So it doesn't make sense to me, even though he needed somebody to help him, that he would go to them. Are there no other people with abilities in London? That's something else that didn't make sense to me. And, and that, like they said, in London there are four million people, but Jesse is the only person who's having nightmares and visions and anything. Like that didn't make sense to me. It also didn't make sense to me that the only other person with abilities that we know of in the show was in Louisiana and he could felt and he felt the presence of Jesse. So you're telling me no other people, not another soul near the UK or Europe. That that now is in Louisiana. Near the UK or Europe had abilities that would have come up in the first series so that Watson would have other options, wouldn't have to body these kids he, who he obviously hated at the beginning. Um, and that really bothered me that he kind of took out his resentment of their mom and with his with his sick toxic love of Sherlock on these kids. Like you knew they existed all these time and you know that their dad ain't a thing and you didn't help him. And also how could you love this man knowing that he don't even love his own kids? Child please. But yeah, that didn't make sense to me. It also didn't make sense to me that Beatrice was so mad initially with Leo about him going home after a certain amount of time. I didn't understand the first time, it just felt like really abruptly he didn't say bye or whatever. But like the second time where he was like, oh he has to go, she was mad. And I'm just like, you do know that just because you're an orphan, that don't mean he an orphan. I understand like, um, he made himself seem like he was also a part of the streets. The streets. 
like the, the, the impoverished lives of London but that doesn't mean he didn't have a family to go home to or he didn't have anybody who's gonna be concerned about his absence for like the full entirety of a day like I didn't understand I didn't get why that was so weird for her to think that at some point he had to go home also I really don't get why Sherlock wouldn't have just told his brother to take care of these kids for me because his brother is living pretty fancy and fine and they literally could have been there with them the whole entire time like if you're going to be a deadbeat daddy and have your addiction issues and just be non-present in these kids and you like his his concept his thinking right this is a genius by the way you're saying this man is brilliant he's a genius correct you're telling me this genius didn't have the forethought to think okay his opinion was um it's best for me not to try to take care of you because I know I cannot. Why wouldn't you tell your brother they exist? You didn't have to be the one to take care of them to take care of them. You know what I mean? Like he, and I, his brother seemed like he would have done it. So, so what? You just, so you just didn't care. Like that's what it seems like. It literally seems like you just did not care. Bruh, that didn't make sense to me. Um, yeah, and I think those were just like the main things that didn't make that much sense to me. If you felt like anything else was just like, mm, it was, it was a bit of a plot hole, let me know in the comments and we'll discuss it. Um, I did like that they killed Mr. Facilier. I didn't like how they killed the little ma the linen man in the oh, this is the man in the linen suit. There you go. I didn't like how they killed him off so quickly. Like, and also, I knew he was the villain. <laughs> Without southern accent, you ain't fooling nobody. Um, I... Oh, and how did no one else not think that this man was a villain? Like, you're, you've been dealing with monsters this whole entire season. People who have been corrupted by, like, this weird power. So you just... And you did the thing, like, this weird man who's invading your freaking dreams. Didn't have any alternative motive whatsoever. Come on now. I, the only thing I can blame that on is that they're kids, but I don't like they killed that character off. Uh, I hope that he comes back somehow. I don't know if... I don't know how they would do that, but literally there's magic, so... Or some kind of spirituality or supernaturalness. So bring him back because we we just got a, a, a small, small look and in peek into his background story. Um, right before he, he was about to die and he seems like a super interesting character like he like I said before he's the only other character we know with the kind of abilities Jesse has and he was able to feel her awakening and feel her power just kind of surge like what kind of power does he have to do that how did he develop his powers what started him like we know Jesse got it from her mom but where did she get it from like he could have been a really cool introduction into what the supernatural is so I just I was really disappointed that they just killed him off like that they just marked him at the end because and again he was super interesting couldn't he just gotten away I don't know so I haven't I haven't read any of the comics so I don't know if they do that for a reason to bring him back but I do hope they bring him back because I think he's died off too soon you can't kill a villain before I even get to know the villain like one of the best things about shows are a lot of times the villains a great villain can make a good show even greater so I hope they bring him back I hope we get a deeper dive into his background I hope he, he just like blows open um, information regarding to the supernatural and it, it, I just want to leave off and note that I think this show has like a lot of great things going for it we have a, a female Asian lead we have a couple of black characters one that's actually written pretty, pretty, pretty decently who seems to be um, LGBT we don't know what regard um, we have the, we have this dynamic love between her, this dynamic forbidden love between her and Leo and Leo is such a sweet guy oh my god those blue eyes he's so cute he's adorable we have this supernatural theme going on so we can see different kinds of monsters going on um, every episode and I did find that the way they introduce monsters is interesting I know some people are saying that some of them were a bit tropey and cliche they've been done before but hey like I think there's only so many things in a show in a movie that you can really that can really be 1000% original and fresh so I'm not even gonna fault them for that um, and yeah I think it's a really good show it's really interesting and I really want to see more from it 
next season. Please get a next season. I know sometimes Netflix cancels things even though it's obviously good. So that was my opinion on the regulars. I hope you liked this um, review or this commentary. Please leave a comment for me in the comments. <laughs> Like just leave a suggestion about what else you'd want to see me talk about. Uh, I don't really want to do commentary or review movies. I think I've said this before, but you could also just suggest to me what you do want to see me comment on, what kind of other content you think would fit with this channel, or you would just want to see from me. And also, I, I'm considering of starting up a second channel, mostly lifestyle. That's really a bit more chill, and probably just do um, very minimal um, videos on that channel. I think I want to do an unbraiding with me video on it for my first video. So just let me know how you guys feel about me and about my work and my content. So thank you. I see, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Here we go. It's all about you. It's all about me. It's all about what we do. Making art. You and me. Trying to find something to believe. Because I'm running wild. I ain't running free. Still got a lot of shit left to see